Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be taking you through one of my favorite text editors, Sublime Text. Specifically, there are a lot of good guides and like things you can read and video series you can watch on using Sublime Text. Um, you can get fairly deeply into this editor, it's very powerful and configurable, but what I think is missing is a quick overview of the most powerful features in Sublime Text. Once you know those features, you'll be much faster, much more powerful, and um, just much more efficient in the editor, and you'll see what all the hype is about. And then you can go and get deeper into the editor on your own time. So if you give me like 10, 15 minutes, I'm going to show you the things that I like the most about this editor. After using it for, I'm trying to think of how long, um, probably three or four years now, and I switched from using Emacs for almost everything, um, and that's saying something. So give Sublime a try. And uh, without further ado, let's jump into what you need to know about it. So when you launch Sublime Text, you're going to start with a sort of blank slate like this. This is a single, uh, I'm going to call it buffer, but this is basically a file. It's nothing, there's no text in it yet, um, and it hasn't been saved yet, which this circle indicates. Uh, if I try to close it, I will get a warning. But what I think is really powerful is the open folder functionality, which gives you more traditional file tree view of a project. Um, which you would be using if you were, say, working on a project. So I have a hands-on Ansible project here for an Ansible course that I did. I'm going to close this original window. And you can see that opens up this entire project's file tree. So we've got the top-level thing. You're used to tree views by now, so I'm not going to bore you with the details, but you can do a lot of useful things here. For example, um, if you create a new file, um, instead of just doing control N, if you do control N, that gives you a new file or buffer. You can also just start typing. And if you save there, it's going to start you with wherever you started. But if, for example, I right click on cheat sheets and then click new file, this is by default going to attempt to save inside of that cheat sheets directory. So it's nice for kind of quickly targeting the place that you want to start a new file in. Um, just saves time. Likewise, you can create directories, new folder, uh, and delete them. We'll call it test. Same idea here. Um, this is permanent, so um, if you're not using version control or something and you accidentally delete a directory here, a folder, um, you're out of luck. So use something like Git or uh, Mercurial or whatever for version control while you work on code. Hands down, one of the most powerful features I've ever seen in an editor is the idea of multiple cursors. And Sublime Text has a sublimely usable implementation of this. Um, so selecting and multiple selecting and multiple cursors work really well. The idea is you select a point by just clicking, like any editor, and then obviously you can type here. But what you can do with Sublime is hold down control and then keep creating new points. So while I'm holding down control, each new click will insert a new point. And then, pretty awesome. There are other nice features of select, and that is if I double click on a string of text, all other occurrences of that string in the file that I'm in are highlighted automatically. So if I double click on name as I just did, you'll see that name here and name here light up. Next is Control D. When I have some text selected, if I hit Control D, then automatically the next occurrence of that string is selected. This is really useful for finding all occurrences of something specific in a file. You can, of course, use Find and Replace, which I'll show you how to do in a second. But um, this is basically a ca case insensitive, as you can see here, uh, select the next occurrence of the currently selected string. Likewise, this gives me uh, multiple cursors, so it's really useful for you know adding in quotes that you forgot or otherwise dealing with things. This idea of multiple cursors also extends to copy and paste, so it's really useful. You can obviously still Control C to copy, Control V to paste, but if you select again with Control multiple um, strings, so I've, I'm hitting Control double-clicking on bloop, 
and then I'm going to keep holding down control and double click on Blarg. This is going to create another cursor. I can do this ad infinitum. If I now hit control C, it's going to copy both of these at two different cursor locations. What that allows me to do is to select some other stuff, again holding down control, and instead of copying this time I'm going to paste. And what's going to happen is I'm going to basically paste these two things as in the order that they were selected in when I copied down here. Um, sounds kind of confusing when I explain it actually, but just try this, right? So select one thing, hold down control, there's your standard multiple select thing, and then hit control C to copy, do multiple select again, holding down control, and then control V. So this allows you to copy and paste multiple selections. This also works with control D. So you could, um, as you saw before, if I select bloop, and then hit control D, and then hit control D again, I can just hit control C now and uh, paste. Let's see. Uh, you do have to select the same number of um, positions when you paste. So I copied three, I'm going to paste three, because if you paste fewer than that, let's say fewer or more, it's going to paste everything in that paste buffer um, out. So I'll get three at each, at each of the two positions that I just selected. Um, just play around, this will become intuitive very quickly, and it is very, very useful. Another really powerful feature of Sublime Text is go to anything. If you hit Control P, that's going to bring up this kind of search bar, and by default it shows you the most recent files that you've visited. By using the up and down keys, you can select between them and get a preview of those files. So I'm not, I haven't actually opened this, I'm just peeking at the file. So this git ignore is not a file I have open. This readme is not a file I have currently have open, but I can peek. So that alone would be useful. What's even more useful is that I can use symbols here uh, to help me search for different things inside of files. So in this case, demo pi, Sublime Text knows that this is a Python file, either because I've specifically told it or because it's assumed that much from the .py extension of the file as it gets opened. So Sublime can give me syntax highlighting for this, obviously, but it can also help me identify and find symbols. This is really useful for navigating large code bases. So if I type in at and then the name of a symbol, well, I'm actually in the wrong file right now, uh, then I will find that symbol. So it would be like symbol name. And Sublime doesn't really know what to do with this file, so I can combine that. I can first say demo, and then I want to, let's say, find nginx. You can see this gives me a drop-down list of two functions that still match. This does fuzzy matching. This is my choice, right? Create nginx config or create cron config line. And there's only three symbols that it sees here. There's a main function, create cron config line, and create nginx config. So that's how I can narrow it down to a symbol inside of a specific file. This, on the other hand, allows me to search the current file for some content. Eh, occasionally useful. Finally, the colon symbol allows me to go to a specific line. So let's say if I want to go to line 40, uh, that is not 40, this is 40. That will allow me to do it. Useful for following up on a traceback that you saw in an error or something like that. You know, oh, error on line 487. Well, you can either kind of like slowly navigate there or just type in the line number. 45, let's see, 75, you get the point. By hitting enter, that will position a cursor at the beginning of that line. My favorite thing about this is that you can actually combine these. So for example, uh, as I showed, we can go, uh, let's say, demo line 10, enter. And that will deposit us at the first matching file, which is demo.py at line 10. So again, that's a really powerful and nice feature to have. Again, if you play around with it for just a couple of minutes, it'll seem intuitive and you'll just be able to do these things that are kind of annoying and time consuming uh, much faster. The command palette. Instead of control P, it's control shift P. And if we have a problem such as that some stuff that we've written isn't actually being highlighted because Sublime can't figure out what language it's in, the first thing we can do is 
tell it the syntax that we want it to use uh, or attempt to use for highlighting and other features like what we just saw navigating to symbols. So I've set the syntax artificially to plain text, but if you just type in Python and hit enter, you'll see set syntax Python, tell Sublime Text, please highlight this as Python. This command palette is also used. Um, you can see the list here and scroll and fuzzy match through it as always. Um, this is used to send commands to the text editor for all kinds of stuff, but you'll discover these as you need them. Find in all files. So most text editors have a sort of simple find or find and replace uh, somewhere in the file menu. There's a whole find menu here that you should explore. Find in files is the one I'm going to show you. You can get to it with control shift, uh, sorry, shift control F, which I'm going to do. So here, this is a blank slate. I can find something. If you've got something highlighted and you do this, it will automatically populate that find field. So it just eliminates that one extra step, that copy and paste, you know, hunt, peck, copy, paste before you get started. So using this without anything in the replace field is just a simple find. You can target your search here. And um, likewise, you can replace. I generally don't replace all. There's a like replace all functionality, but generally I will find to make sure that I really want to replace every single instance um, of the string I'm looking for and then proceed that way. If, for example, let's say, uh, yeah, that's good. So we'll find in files, uh, let's say we want to find everywhere that it says name. So blah, 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 we're moving around, we're moving around, we type in name, and we hit enter or click the find button. Another buffer opens. This is essentially a file, it's not saved or anything, but it's a plain text file with each search result in it. So the search results are basically snippets of files, including not line numbers, and then the file name. Double clicking the file name, as you just saw, gives me uh, a link to that file. So I'll actually open that file in a new buffer. Double click, that file opens. Now you can see the cursor's at the beginning of line one. If, instead of doing that, I double click on the place where the string I'm searching for was found, it's going to open the file and place the cursor on that line. It's useful for large files or looking for something specific. Packages. So when you hit Control shift p you'll get the command palette open. And if you then type in install, one of the first things you should see on a brand new install, which this is not, is the ability to, quote, install package control. You should highlight that option and hit enter. Sublime Text will go off and do something for a second, install the package control package, and then you've got the ability to install packages. Then when you open the command palette, as I just did, and type in install, and then select install package, as you can see in the lower left there, it's loading the repos, and this is an up-to-date listing of the package repositories. They're huge, you can scroll through them if you like. Um, lots of stuff in here. But if you're, again, this fuzzy match search thing that Sublime Text does so well, um, is really nice and you can use it here. So if you're looking for a theme, there you go. If you're looking for, as I am, Sublime Lint, I already have that installed. Oh, no, I totally didn't. I take it all back. It's Sublime Linter. So go ahead and uh, grab Sublime Linter. Um, this will give you, uh, this will install the package and then give you this readme doc where you can go to the website for documentation on how to use it. Um, depending on the language you're trying to lint, each programming language might have a different operating system package or software that you need to install before this works, uh, library. So definitely check out the documentation, but if you program, then this is something that can really, really help find bugs, find syntax errors, and otherwise clean up your code um, and make it nice. So Sublime Linter, highly, highly, highly recommend it and highly recommend that you read the docs. The last uh, theme related or package install related thing I'm gonna show you. So Command Shift P again, install to get the package installation function. And then when the package repositories have loaded, I'm going to just choose a theme and why don't we say, let's look for um, cyanide. Horrifying. Could go ahead and click on that and this should give us a new theme. 
you can see it's installing right now. Now you can click on preferences, look at color scheme, and then you can see our theme there. Wow, this has a ton of variation. That's pretty awesome. Um, let's do uh, contrasted semi wood. Oh, this is actually quite nice. Last package recommendation. If you're doing any kind of web development, I highly, highly recommend you download Emmet. In install, install package, Emmet. Emmet's an amazing package that allows you to generate HTML using CSS selectors, essentially. Um, it can allow you to do things very, very easily. I'm just gonna set syntax HTML here, and we're gonna say an unordered list. Inside of it, we'll have uh, five line items that each contain a div with the class uh, my content. Uh, whoops, I needed HTML tags around that. Um, so I've got this unordered list, uh, list items, five of them, each of them including a my content div, that's the class. If I then hit tab, this will go ahead and expand that into the actual markup that I just specified with CSS selectors, that sort of syntax. Super useful, super time-saving. It's great if you're doing any kind of web development. Just wanted to give a shout out to that plugin. Finally, settings. The Under preferences, um, the settings for Sublime Text are gonna open a brand new window. So go ahead and click on settings and then we'll transport it somewhere else, new desktop. And here's the deal. These are the default settings. These are your user settings. So you can change the defaults, you can add overrides for your specific user settings. You can, uh, this is just a JSON file, so JavaScript object notation. Uh, if that is something that you're comfortable with, you can edit this to your heart's content. I uh, just wanted to mention that, you know, feel free to copy and paste anything over here. As long as it's a valid JSON, um, you're not gonna have a problem. So that is that. This is how you change settings. So I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to Sublime Text. I really think that getting good at this editor um, will make you incredibly efficient, it will make your life easy, and it just kind of makes editing tasks fun. You will spend most of your working life, if you're doing this, in a text editor. And it pays off to have a good one and to understand its features. I do recommend you kind of expand your knowledge about this. These are just the most useful and powerful things I've found in this editor. But you should learn all the little ins and outs too, and you will over time. Don't be too hard on yourself. Thanks again for watching. Uh, if this stuff is useful, remember to like, subscribe, and share. Please share. It's so useful when people share this, uh, especially on places like Reddit. If you have any other features that you like about Sublime Text, feel free to leave them in the comments for other people. Sharing is caring. And I'm on call and I'm getting paged.